The outgoing NAB Chairman Ken Henry joins me now. Thank you very much for coming in. It's good to be with you. In a statement to the ASX on Tuesday, the NAB said that both you and Andrew Thorburn would stay on. Today you've stepped down. What's changed? Mm. We've had further time for reflection. And in reflecting, Andrew and I have had many, many conversations, as you would imagine, over that period of time. And we came to the view, jointly really, that it was in the best interests of NAB that we take the decision together to step down from our respective roles. And why did you believe that to be in the best interests of NAB? It's in the best interests of NAB because times like this, when a Royal Commission shines such an intense spotlight on an industry which has proved incapable of meeting customer expectations um, on a consistent basis, it's appropriate that senior people in the organisation step up and take accountability. Does it underscore the point that the Royal uh, Commission made that the NAB doesn't really get it, that it took several days for you to reach this conclusion? No, I, I don't think so. This is about something else. Um, his comment was uh, about us not getting what it takes to meet customer expectations, to deliver on the customer, um, to deliver for the customer every time and everywhere. And we accept that finding. Andrew and I both accept that finding. Uh, we share and have shared an aspiration for NAB that it have a culture amongst its people that's capable of delivering exceptional service for all of its customers everywhere and every time. And when we looked into the findings of the Royal Commission report and the more we thought about that and his observation that we fell short of that, that there was a significant gap, we came to accept that that was certainly correct. There is a significant gap and, and partly what Andrew and I are saying today, partly what we're saying is we are deeply sorry for that. But frankly, even before the Royal Commission came out, you would have or should have known enough to understand that senior heads perhaps needed to roll. Well, we knew that we had big issues to deal with. Uh, but the, the Royal Commission report shines a spotlight on the issue of accountability and who takes accountability for the performance of an organisation. But I guess what a lot of Australians would wonder is why did it take a Royal Commission for the banks to understand that they needed to be accountable for the sort of revelations we've seen now going back years? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's taken a Royal Commission to do that, but it has been useful. The Royal Commission has certainly been useful in shining such an intense spotlight on activity and holding people to account in the way that it has. It's been a useful exercise. In fact, I would say that the enduring legacy of this report will be that intense scrutiny that it has shone uh, on financial institutions and the way in which it's forced senior people in those organisations to confront some really challenging things. Is there a wide gap, as, uh, as Commissioner Haynes said, between the public face that the NAB seeks to present and what it actually does in practice? There is a big gap. The gap, um, as I see it, is that NAB does aspire um, to do the right thing by every customer, every time and everywhere. And we're a long way from that. We've got an absolute mountain to climb in NAB in order to achieve uh, our aspiration for the bank. We know we're on the right path. Uh, we're making big investments in the business over the next, uh, well, last year, in the next two years, another one and a half billion dollars just in that three year period on top of what we would normally do. Um, and we're making uh, big changes to staff in the organisation and to systems making a better business, a business that's capable of achieving that aspiration. But we, we accept that we are a long way from that and we've not been able to satisfy customer expectations nor community expectations. And as I said, for that, we're deeply sorry. We are saying we are deeply sorry. And in our departure, departures, we are hoping that we will contribute to the development of a better industry that's capable of delivering better outcomes for customers. NAB customers and shareholders would be understandably concerned by what they've heard uh, from the Royal Commission and its findings, mm. and particularly singling out your bank among the big four banks. Mm. Now the bank's leadership, uh, the mm. two key leaders have gone. Why should customers and investors not take their business elsewhere, given what we've learned? Yeah, sure. Uh, they shouldn't because NAB is demonstrating that it's absolutely committed to building a better bank. When senior people in the organisation say, we understand, we are sorry, 
we are going to take accountability. We're going to, and in my case, I'm going to stay behind for however long it takes to appoint uh, the right successor to our going CEO, Andrew Thorburn. I'm going to stay behind to ensure appropriate board renewal and that the board is strengthened by my departure, not weakened by my departure. When senior people in the organisation commit themselves to those things, people should, I think, take heart. But then if I had my life savings with the NAB, I have to trust that the bank is going to act in the future in a way that it hasn't acted in the past, and I have to believe you no, over I, the I, Royal I Commission. Really don't, I really don't think that's true. Um, there have been instances where the bank has certainly delivered, delivered the wrong outcome for customers. The financial institutions of this country are not in that state, Lee. It's, it's not the case that people cannot trust financial institutions to look after their life savings. No, but my point is, could I not trust the Commonwealth Bank or Westpac or ANZ more than I could trust our the customers, NAB? Our customers are not saying to us and have not been saying to us during the Royal Commission, we're worried we can't trust you to look after the money that we have on deposit with you. We've had nobody saying that to us. When you testified at the Royal Commission, there was some commentary at the time that you were defensive and somewhat yeah. contemptuous yeah. in your manner, and the yeah. Royal Commissioner said yeah. in his findings that you appeared unable to accept criticism. What do you say to that? Yeah. Look, initially I was surprised by that commentary. Um, I mean, quite surprised, and I was upset by it. The more I thought about it, and <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I've relived that appearance, um, I understand the criticism. I did not perform well. I really should have performed quite differently. I should have been much more open. Um, at, at the time, were you feeling defensive and resentful of being there? I wasn't feeling resentful. No, 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 I was not feeling resentful. But I can understand why I came across that way. Um, I was feeling defensive and I should not have been. At the Royal Commission in your testimony, you said that it would take 10 years to change the culture at NAB. Won't the bank be in serious trouble if it does take that long to pick no, up the No, I game? think that's, um, look, I, I think that's probably um, a slight misconstruing of what I said. I was asked a question about how long it takes to change the culture of a large organisation or a question to that effect. And I said that these things can take as long as 10 years. I think that's what I said. Anyway, that's what I intended to say. I don't believe it will take that long in NAB. No, no I don't. Um, I think the, uh, we're well on the pathway to developing the right culture in NAB. And I'm very confident that the NAB that I leave will be capable of developing that culture within a relatively short period of time, a few years, not 10 years. Do you believe that you are leaving the NAB in better shape than you found it? So. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And yet, I also believe that we are not much closer yet to delivering on community expectations. So the gap that was there, that gap still remains. We've closed it a bit. We have an intention to close it completely with the investments that we're making and the changes that are underway in the bank. Uh, that remains the aspiration. I'm confident that within a few years, uh, and hopefully much sooner than that, NAB will be a much stronger institution than when I joined it. Ken Henry, thank you for speaking on our, to our audience on what's undoubtedly a difficult day personally. We appreciate your time. Thank you.